Adobe is a $300 billion company with creativity at its core. Before it expanded into digital marketing and measurement services, Adobe was known for software like Photoshop, Illustrator, and Premiere for photos, graphics, and video. This week, the company had its annual Max Conference for Creatives. Creatives. Uh, and John Ford, a creative. You're a, you're a creative. John Ford brings us up close in person with the CEO who has transformed Adobe from a niche player into a powerhouse. Who doesn't use an Adobe product? Uh, I mean, Pr practically you, every day. I mean, PDF, yeah. at the very least. Practically you can't, every day. You can't avoid it. Um, and whether you're a creative or not, Chantanu Narayan has an understated leadership style. He's known for his engineering vision. And with him at the helm, Adobe became the first big legacy software company to transform for the cloud era, shifting to a subscription model. What you wouldn't know about Chantanu from his resume, though, is that he loves literature. He's the son of an English teacher, and if he weren't a CEO, he might be sitting right here with us. I always loved, I, I, you know, I wanted to be a journalist, and I think, you know, maybe there was that part of, you know, my mother that was an uh, inspiration to me. I, I think the two authors that probably uh, influenced me the most, uh, I mean, I, I grew up reading a lot. In my family, there was always time and money for books, uh, John. And so Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, you know, so the mystery, the intrigue, I think that's a genre that's always, uh, you know, excited me. And, and then the other one, I would say, was P.G. Wodehouse. And P.G. Wodehouse, uh, amazing uh, humor. And most importantly, I think what I learned from that was, you know, how every word that he chooses was appropriate. And that attention to detail takes on new importance in a digital advertising market that's reeling from changes. Apple's made it harder for companies to track consumers online and target advertising to them. And Narayan says that's put Adobe's approach to digital marketing in the spotlight. I think in that journey, you have to navigate, as you point out, what you're doing with the security of information, what you're doing with privacy. Uh, but the big conversation that we're having with every company is instead of focusing on third-party data, how do you really take advantage of your first-party data? How do you create a trust relationship with your customers? And so I think we're seeing a transition, uh, even from the advertising, where the focus was on acquisition and where third-party data was important and people talked about the cookie-less world, to what can you do with first-party data? Uh, right now, Facebook and others are making a lot of the idea that Apple's privacy changes in iOS are damaging small and medium businesses. Investors would be wise to note, though, that's not the only storyline. Chantanu's positioning Adobe to help businesses rely less on targeting, have more direct relationships. That's similar to the approach from Shopify, and we'll see if it works. But Narayan's an engineering CEO with a love for literature who's been known to rewrite the plot. I, slightly confused. How are they a middleman between businesses and consumers? I think of them as the product. It sounds like they are facilitating a relationship that I didn't realize they were in the middle of. Well, Adobe's got not just the creative products that they're talking about right now at Max this week, but they've also got their digital marketing products that help companies understand who's coming to their sites, you know, uh, you're talking about newsletters, follow up and, and track that information. That's why uh, last week we had the holiday projection from Adobe. They touched so many retailers that they're able to project how this holiday wow. is going to go, how they're using buy now, pay later. And then their experience cloud also tracking the interaction between the customer and the company to, and even the company's employees and the customer to try to get a better sense of how to fine tune that. He's saying that that's more the future. If you've got your own data, you don't have to rely on these platforms that have to ask permission from Apple to track people. So it's not just a creative, it's a data science company that's, in, in large measure, right? That's now the you, you had a very important phrase in there that they're going to move from targeting to, what, what was the phrase? I don't remember. From, from targeting to, to another, uh, to yes. another uh, t targeting uh, individuals to working with their customers. The first party data. The first party data. Got, what does that look like? Party. What does that mean? That means they've got permission from the customer to have the data themselves. And that's uh, a different sort of relationship. So when the customer's logging in, Right? They're getting that information directly from you, maybe because they see a piece of content that they like. If you're Netflix, boy, you're their subscriber. You're logging into Netflix. They have permission mm -hmm. to track you. That's mm -hmm. a different sort of relationship than somebody who's trying to go through Facebook and saying, well, I want you to target you know, soccer moms in the Detroit suburbs 
with this ad to mm -hmm. get them to my site. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that anymore, then that's difficult for you. Whereas if you're getting the user to your site using perhaps content that you created mm -hmm. through the Adobe suite, using those tools, you're able to target different. If I could turn back the clock for a minute, there's one part of the story I've always wondered about, and it is, so again, they pioneered the move to become software as a service. And then Microsoft very successfully followed suit. And I remember Value Act was very involved, I think, with first Adobe, then realizing it could transform Microsoft. Now, of course, it's the whole industry. Do you know how that original decision was made? I what do. insight or what people were involved in them going, hey, instead of selling this for X amount, period, you have to subscribe? And, and did they fully realize the kind of potential that was going to unlock? This surprised me. In that Fort Knox interview with Sean Sinema, he told me a big part of what drove that decision was the financial crisis, right? Adobe had to lay off, and they hate doing that. And he said, when management has to do layoffs, the first time you can blame the macro environment, the second time it's management's fault. So he hmm. said, we have too little recurring revenue, we're requiring too much, relying too much on these product cycles. How do we even that out? Wow. Plus, he said, uh, our engineers are saying, we wanna roll out new features, but it's too hard to do when we've gotta wait for these cycles for, you know, box software and mm -hmm. just download. Mm -hmm. So how can we fix that? Well, through subscriptions and through engineering the product so that it's backward and forward compatible. So they went through that whole process Amazing. in part so that they could save the workforce. And it ended up just being an amazing, everybody, you know, Satya Nadella, uh, Intuit, all these folks everybody. have come to Adobe for the playbook to figure out how to make this transition. Yeah, incredible. Right. John, thank you. John Ford. Yeah.